than trying to reach out for a papal touch as he walks onto the floor of the house. After the historic speech by Lenin's Pope, the doors to the cloakrooms and the hallways will be blocked or locked to prevent lawmakers from leaving the chamber for half an hour until Francis has appeared on the West Front balcony to greet the ticketed throng and then has departed the hill by motorcade. Motorcade? Not run on banana peels, not on a donkey notice. All that carbon just for him. And I don't think they're turning the air conditioning off in that chamber of heat. The hottest chamber on earth, the Congress, will not turn off the air conditioning for the anti-air conditioning pope. Coverage begins Thursday, September 24th at 9.30 a.m. Hmm. A reflection of the unique protocol, security, and political concerns attended the first papal address to a joint meeting of Congress. Of course, it's the first papal address. It's unheard of. But because he is a Marxist in accord with the Democrat National Socialists, uh, they've invited him. And the drunk had nothing to say. He said, what, Pope? Yeah, sure, whatever you say, Barry. Yeah, whatever. You got the Johnny Walker down in Jacksonville for me? So not, they're not allowed to touch him. No fist bumps. No, uh, no kissing the papal ring. No touching the hem of his cassock. Let's see. Uh, no glad handing or hugging him. That's amazing. Posting the Capitol Police or Swiss Guards in the aisles would look awful. So leadership is looking for about 50 members known for their patience and institutional good manner. In other words, the thugs in suits. They're not going to have police or guards to guard the man of peace. Instead, they'll have thugs in suits, men in black. They have to wear dark colors with hems below the knee for women as papal protocol dictate. I mean, the, the big scream here is going to be the atheists at like... Uh, What's that one from Florida, that Yenta, the one who's protecting Hillary from any debates? I can't imagine how she's going to go hysterical with the Pope. da 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 da, -da Pope. Da -da. Democrats are telling likes of Representative Elliot Engel of New York and Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas. Republicans are telegraphing to folks such as Reps Billy Wong of Missouri that their well-honed spot-saving tactics for presidential appearances won't work for this event. Oh, when they go down the aisle and they're all right there and they shake. So they don't get a second of FaceTime. With the, with the guest of honor. Smartphone selfies, flash photography, and cheering by the members are also being vigorously discouraged. But the Vatican has, the, has relented and decreed that a standing ovation remains appropriate while the great man Francis makes his way to the well and then ascends the rostrum. Is that where the word well drink comes from? He, he's very familiar with the well from his years as a bartender. He knows what a well drink is. And since most of them are drunks, they are, that's why they call it the well. After that genuine silence, not so much as an audible amen, will be expected from every corner of the chamber. This is not only to allow the great man to deliver his speech on a tight timeline, but also to prevent any of the applause. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, thank God there's no applause for every time he burps. Thank God we'll, we'll actually be able to hear him. The Pope's schedule is a tight one. To boost the odds he'll stay on, he's likely to avoid the lawmakers altogether after his address and exits to the Speaker's lobby. While the members and the holders of the covenant seats in the visitor's gallery remain on lockdown, Pope will pass through Statuary Hall where he can get glimpsed by the former members and other second-tier dignitaries who have been watching on TV. His next stop will be back in the office of Speaker John Boehner of Ohio. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Are you on a shot there? Uh, no one's looking. With whom we will meet one-on-one. -on -one. And, of course, Pelosi, one of the most religious people in the history of the world. After, didn't she wash the feet of uh, illegal aliens? Maybe she talk about her, I, her preferred soap or something. Then she's going to meet the wonderful, esteemed Harry Reid, the Pope. He's a clean, uh, oh, God in heaven. This is really bad. And then at 11 a.m., Pope's supposed to get into his car and head to the next stop, St. Patrick's at 10th and G. It's the old, oldest Roman Catholic parish in the city, created in 1794 to serve the mostly Irish immigrant craftsmen, building the Capitol and the White House. Irish built it? Who would have thunk? I thought Muslims would have built the White House. I thought Obama said the Muslims created uh, NASA and the White House. I didn't know that Irish immigrants built the Capitol and the White House. Shows you my ignorance. I would have thought it was Muslims. 60 parishioners chosen by lottery, plus 250 clients and volunteers from the downtown outpost of Catholic Charities have been promised FaceTime. Catholic Charities is just a business, by the way. Okay, so there's the thing. He's coming on Yom Kippur and 
which is unto itself very interesting. He's, he's speaking to the UN on Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the Jewish year. So I guess he wanted a, uh, a sort of a less <laughs> a good day to pick. <laughs> to make me the schedule. Oh, I can't wait till this week is over. I knew this would be a tough week. I knew it was going to be a rough week. Man, I knew it was tough. I just knew it. In France, Obama finds an ally to amplify his agenda to the public, says Bloomberg. Poverty, immigration, climate change. Pontiff's agenda dovetails with that of President Zero. And some of his advisors are looking to France's arrival in the U.S. on Tuesday as a way to lift the prospects of getting the unfinished work of his presidency done. God save us from his unfinished work. While Francis has the potential to... Okay, I don't want to read any more of this. He was in Cuba, and he stiffed the, uh, the dissidents. They were beaten up by thugs and thrown into the back of a black van while the great holy man said nothing. Look the other way. The Pope's first public mass in the U.S. will be given in Spanish, highlighting his connection with the country of Hispanic immigrants. Isn't that nice? And after decrying savage capitalism, he goes to New York, the global center of finance. And uh, in, at the U.N. and at the Congress, the air conditioning will not be turned off. So here we are. Here we are, all you good Catholics out there. I don't know how educated Catholics can put up with this without seeing what's going on in their own church. I mean, look, we attack radical Islam on a daily basis. We understand the danger of radical Islam. And many Muslims will say, we all oppose radical Islam. Most Muslims are peace-loving. We don't want the radicals. You have to believe them. You have to believe CAR that they're not a radical group themselves that they really do oppose radical Islam. And just because they want to tell Ben Carson to drop out of the race for daring to say he doesn't think a Muslim should be president doesn't make them radicals, not in their own mind. No, they're not radicals at all. They have a right to tell anyone what they think. They think Ben Carson should drop out because he said a Muslim shouldn't be president. So just as many Muslims say that they're not radicals, I would think that many Catholics say that they're not radicals either. How do they fight such a pope? who has been foisted upon them by secret powers. It's amazing. What do you do? Probably you keep quiet for fear that you'll be ostracized. You don't say a word. You curtsy, you bow, you cater. You don't utter a word. The king has no clothes. You don't say that. You don't dare say the king has no clothes. Because in this case, the papal king does have clothes. It's a red garment. And you know what? I think we've seen it before. In fact, when the Pope comes and he speaks, I think we're going to play the Rolling Stones, Sympathy for the Devil. Well, anyway, that's just a thought, trying to put the music together, putting music to his words. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is 24 minutes after the hour, the third hour of the Savage Nation. Let's go right to a caller in New York City, WABC. Patricia, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please. I Are you th totally, as a, as a Catholic, am opposed to this pope. I'm opposed to the message of hate that this man is spreading. And when I say that, what I mean is he is saying we... We need to hate rich people. We need to, I mean, what's next? Is somebody finally going to come out and say the words that we need to hate success? And yes. we need to hate... That's right. The Pope is a hate monger. I'm glad you said it, not me. But, you know, he's, he's, as, he's as clever as Obama in his dissemination of hatred. Notice they don't scream and yell. They're no longer using the Che Guevara methodology. You know, Mao Zedong said power comes out of the barrel of a gun. I would say power comes out of the barrel of a pun uh, just as effectively. So the Pope does it with a soft shoe act. Nice man, kindly old man, Obama. Nice man, kindly minority. Notice they never scream and yell. There's no longer a, a Stalin-esque yelling or a, more specifically a Hitler-like screaming and yelling. There's no longer a, a Mussolini-like on a balcony. No, no, no. It's not Lenin screaming in a town square. It's done nice. Everything's done nice. They had good coaches, Obama and him. They get it all through being nice. 
because the people are afraid of loud men and they think loud men are bad men and soft, quiet men are good men. The average person is a moron. But what's your main point? The Pope is disseminating hatred with his class warfare is what you're saying, correct? Yes, I do believe that. And I also believe I, I am so scared. We're now going, not me, but they, he, the church, and along with all, the entire left, is now indoctrinating the children to feel the exact same way. You see the interview. Patricia, did you, did you hear me summarize chapter 8 of Government Zero called Zero Religion, Lenin's Pope? Did you hear any of that in the early part of the show? Yes. I am going to send you one of the first copies that, when they come off the press for one reason. I hope you are so encouraged by the many, many pages I have on Lenin's Pope that you will send your copy or buy another copy for a Catholic friend who is fairly well-educated but quite ignorant about what this Pope is and what his agenda is. My only hope is to try and save the world. I'm trying to do it through the Catholics now. It dawned on me today that because of the controversy of this Pope, maybe the Catholics with intelligence can get the word out as to who he is. So stay on the line. Give us your address. I'm going to send you a copy of Government Zero. It won't be out for another month. I don't want to go off too soon on it. Yes, she said it, not I. Hatred can be disseminated in the quietest, quietest of ways. They don't do it with anger anymore. Anger doesn't work. The minute you raise your voice like a man, you're attacked as being a bigot and a this and a that. But all you got to do is whisper it. Sly whispers in the halls of Congress. And then the enemy within plies his trade. Look how well it's worked. Has Harry Reid ever yelled? That quiet, nice man from Nevada. And look how good he is. Notice this. The most despotic of individuals never yell. Have you noticed that? I never trusted whisperers. I like loud men. I trust loud men more than whisperers, by the way. That's why my, my best friend is a dog. It's the savage nation. Be here or be nowhere. Should the one access to the despot try to trip up Trump and the more they attacked him the higher he went up in polls because people know he's speaking the truth I think it's a fair question to ask is the Pope a true Catholic because his politics are not that of a Catholic Church his politics are that of Che Guevara uh, combined with Bernie Sanders like Bernie Sanders and Che Guevara in one here in San Francisco of course we have a heat wave it's like the summer of Sam here you don't want to be in downtown San Francisco today around the bums that's all I can tell you I wish they'd bring back the water trucks. The stink of the urine and the fecal matter is beyond belief. 88 degrees. I was supposed to drop to 68 tomorrow. The fog's coming, and we call it marine layer. I, I Thank God I was going to go back by Friday. Oh, my God. A nightmare. 88 is very hot for here. I always used to joke when I was on the air that I used to love to see German tourists in shorts shivering with the hair standing up on their legs as the fog blew up their, their shorts. I used to wear a scarf and a pea coat in the summer. I loved August. Horrible now. I mean, the, the norm here in the, is, is 56 to 74 this time of year. But the record was a low of 45, by the way. Oh, what I love a 45-er. And a high of 95. Max 95. So we're not in a max yet. That was probably before the, the Model T Ford. The 95-er probably hit before Jerry Brown came along. And the hot air coming out of his mouth probably drove the mean temperature of the state up by a degree. I, I got to tell you, you know, if you study climatology as I have, by no means an expert, but more than most people, and I can read data. In 1875, I think that was long before the car, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. Long before the internal or infernal combustion engine in about 1875, it was so hot in the Central Valley of California, you see, that the cornfields exploded into flames. It's true. Before there were meth labs in the Central Valley. Uh, the heat, the heat, you see. Well, you could blame it on the Industrial Revolution, which had occurred several hundred years before. It was those damn Brits and those factories over there in Manchester that did it. But then again, the Pope didn't know about that then, and he couldn't blame industrialization. So they waited for this one to blame air conditioning. <laughs> So here we are. <laughs> I mean, it is good to live in interesting times. Sometimes you say, how can you go on in radio like this with this depressing, this depressing situation going on in the world? A, a communist in the White House, a communist in the, in the Vatican, 
Wherever you turn, it's like uh, the idiot uh, Bernie Sanders now, the crump 